Hello and welcome back to part 4 of this tutorial series. Uh, in part 4 we will, uh, you know, add elevators or moving objects in general. Uh, create a, um, like a dev pit physics volume and do some optimizations in terms of uh, lighting and um, rendering with anti-portals. So, to create a moving object, um, a moving object, we need to we need two essential things. The first one is the actual static mesh, which will be which will be moving. Uh, I'm using the elevator lift from the multiplayer. It's it can be found in multiplayer GM package, and then in the assault ship category. Uh, to add an moving object, um, just hit the icon with like the blue platform icon with the four black arrows, uh, which has which has uh, add mover brush, and it will um, it will add the the mover to the last um, to last location where the last uh, BSP was created. And by general, uh, by default, the all moving objects are highlighted in purple in the 2D view, and they have a red outline in the 3D viewport. So we will be moving the elevator down to the first level. Um, again, conveniently, we can just change the scale and the draw scale settings to make it slightly bigger to fit the shaft and yeah we we'll just move it in the right place uh, the second thing we need are triggers uh, the triggers can be found in the actor classes um, sorry and yeah, the actor classes triggers and then the actual trigger so we add a trigger here and as the as the name implies um, it will handle the movement of of the moving object um, opening up the properties um, we should change the collision radius and height to some you know bigger values Oops. Um, that way, whenever we are in this radius of the trigger, um, we can use it. Uh, also, moving down a little bit, and also what we should do is in the trigger, in the trigger category, trigger type. By default, it's set to player proximity, um, which uh, like it triggers whenever um, we walk into the radius, but we don't want to uh, to trigger it automatically. We want to use the F key or the use key to trigger it. So in the drop-down menu, we choose TT use. So it's set to like whenever we press the F key, um, the trigger will trigger. <laughs> uh, yeah. We also want to set uh, B trigger once only to false because we want to trigger the uh, trigger the um, elevator multiple times and not only once yeah and finally in the events tab uh, in the event name we will give a custom event name um, I will, for example, I will just choose lift as the name for the event. And that's it for the trigger part. So whenever we are in this radius and we use the F key, we trigger an event called lift. Uh, finally, um, we need the additional three triggers. We need one on this elevator. So we can trigger the elevator when we are standing on it, and we need two um, 
up on the on the, on the upper floor. Uh, conveniently, you can uh, right-click on it and then duplicate it. It will duplicate the actor and all its um, change properties. So just easy copy paste. So we just place one trigger on the elevator so we can trigger it from there. And also, um, like add two on the upper floor, so you can use the elevator on each floor. Okay, uh, the triggers is done now. The elevator. Um, the elevator. I already moved it to the initial starting position. Um, to create um, so-called mover frames uh, or positioning positions where the mover will move, uh, we right-click on the mover, and there will be a mover category, and we select the key zero base. So this is like the the first um, like the first initial position of the mover. Then we right click again, go again to mover, and this time we select key one. And after selecting key one, we just move the elevator to the position we want the the second mover frame to be, or key one in this case. So this is the upper floor. So to check if we did everything right, um, we can again right click mover and select key zero. And this brings it down to the lower level. And if we select key one, it will be on the upper lower uh, on the upper floor again. So with this in mind we we uh, set up the mover friends correctly. And if you want to like have a, a third floor, you just do it again. We just um, click on move and this time uh, key two, and then just move it um, like to the third floor and so on. Um, finally, we open up the um, the mover properties and. On the mover category, uh, we can uh, specify some things. Uh, most importantly, the move times, uh, the time spent in seconds um, for the elevator to travel be um, in between the key, uh, the mover frames. Um, for example, um, from zero to one, so up and down, uh, we just uh, I just uh, set it to five seconds, and again from um, like going up to down again. Oh, I just set it to five five seconds again. So it like um, tr it travels up and down and down and up in in five seconds. Um, the next thing is um, in the object uh, category, the initial state. Um, we have to change that to uh, trigger toggle, so it's to indicate that the, um, the moving object, the mover, is being uh, controlled by the triggers. Uh, if you're creating doors, for example, um, you can, um, or you could use stand open timed. Um, stand open time means uh, the mover will stay um, in the one mover frame for a certain amount of time. This can be useful for um, doors closing after a certain amount of time. Um, in this case, we just use trigger control. If you want to um, um, like uh, let the doors close um, after a certain time, you have to change the state stay open time in the mover category. By default it's four seconds and after that the door will 
um, you know close automatically if you if you use the other initial state type. And finally, in the events in the events category, um, the tag we have to change the tag to the event we specified in the triggers. In this case, the uh, lift. So we connect the triggers to the lift or the moving object. And that's it for a um, default, a, yeah, easy to use, um, you know, moving object. There are also like um, more parameters or more properties. Most of them are more or less self-explanatory. Um, but for now, this is like an easy, easy, um, like tutorial on how to create a base elevator or moving object in general. You can also specify the mover sounds in this category so it plays a certain sound effect when um, it's uh, closing or opening in this case uh, moving up and then moving down again. Uh, to select a sound uh, you go to the sound tab in the content window uh, select a random sound you want to for example this battle droid sound and then in the close sound, you just hit the use button and will automatically link the um, sound effect. And yeah. So that way we can easily, we easily created a simple elevator. Uh, the next thing is um, uh, zoning. Um, in the previous video, I placed a zone info which illuminates um, all the rooms with a certain brightness. Um, this is because all those rooms are um, uh, connected with the BSP geometry mesh. Um, we can create a you know, fake wall, more or less, to prevent the um, the light brightness illumination from the zone info to to um, like affect all the other rooms. So in this case, this room. So I created a sheet uh, BSP with this builder, the sheet builder, uh, 500 in each direction. I just move it to the place uh, where I want to cover the whole or the, the connection between the two. Um, BSP rooms. I make sure that the um, the sheet is covering the um, the geometry perfectly, so there are no like tiny holes or gaps in between. One second. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now it's perfectly aligned. So um, next we hit uh, the um, add special brush icon, which is just like above the mover icon. Click on it and we select portal, um, invisible and two-sided. Uh, one second. Yeah, so portal invisible and um, two sided. Click on OK. The texture doesn't really matter um, because it will be invisible in game anyway. I mean, you could choose another texture. For example, this one doesn't really matter. And as you can see, um, with this um, you call fake wall, um, we, ca we, we, we disconnected both rooms in terms of um, lighting. So this, all those rooms are connected physically 
and are still eliminated by this zone info. But since we added this fake wall here, um, or if I change it to dynamic lighting, um, the illumination stopped there. You can also see like, um, like the transition between light and darkness. Although, if you would do it in a more um, good looking way, you would like hide it or move the wall more onto the edge so it's not that obvious. Finally, we can add the light here and uh, change the color to red or whatever. And so Again, if you build all or the build lighting, we see green on the on the one room and red on the other, and they don't um, like interact with each other. Uh, next up is uh, physics volumes. Um, it can be used for uh, blocking certain stuff or setting the gravity or killing you or whatever. Um, again, we just start with the cube builder and I want to create a death pit down below. So I just aligned the new B BSP, the geometry I just created to fit the, the pit. Uh, move it down. So and next there is a, a volume icon just below the mover icon. Right click on it and select um, physics volume. And when we move the uh, geometry away, we see a now a new geometry of physics volume which is like um, white grayish outlined. Uh, double click on one of those lines and uh, it brings up the physics volume properties and in the physics volume category we can uh, specify certain things like um, the gravity for example if we want like low gravity or whatever and uh, there's also like damage per second uh, which uh, by default the player pawn uh, got 200 health so if we set damage per second to 200 um, yeah, we would instantly die. If we use damage per second, you also have to set the B-Pain causing to true. So otherwise, uh, the damage per second won't affect any, or won't do anything. And there are like other um, physics related um, categories uh, or properties like uh, ground friction and um, other stuff and um, yeah, you can you can look them up by yourself. Like most of them are self-explanatory. So we created a death pit down below. We separated the um, um, the the zone info um, ambient lighting from me from from this room to this room. In theory, you could also or you could also create a new zone info inside this room. To have like two separate um, uh, ambient lighting and uh, zone um, information or zone properties. Um, the zone info will be used later in the future for terrain and other stuff. And uh, finally, there is um, there are anti anti portals. Um, anti portals are also more or less geometry meshes. In most parts they are just flat sheets. And let me create a flat sheet, so 2,000 in each direction. Um, Anti-portals are being used to um, hide a certain um, like certain map parts from the viewport rendering for optimization and performance reasons. Uh, back like in the 2000s, 
this was mandatory to do because of uh, of like the general hardware or the general uh, power of computers. Nowadays, it's not that important anymore, but um, there are still engine limitations you can like reach if you don't do optimization with anti portals. Um, usually, they are used to or used. Um, uh, in, like in between, for example, doors or um, um, outside the actual BSP room, because otherwise you can break the rendering. Um, this I will just do a simple one. This uh, for this example. Um, in the future, we will have to you know do it more, like do a more detailed video about it. Just click on um, once we have its suitable location. For example, when I'm inside here, and the upper the upper floor won't be rendered to me because I have an anti portal in between. The same applies to when I'm up here, um, and I look down. The, it won't be rendered because there's an anti portal. So I just um, place it here outside the. Um, BSP geometry mesh, and I just click um, at anti portal, and when I move it up, you can see it has some a brown, brownish um, outline. Um, yeah, I, I can I will show you just how it looks in game. Okay, so uh, let's build everything and test it in game. Da ist ein großes Flugabwehrgeschütz. And again, as you see, the lightning changes. Doesn't look really good, but just for demonstration. And if I fall down here, I die. So yeah, the death pit is working. The zone, the zoning works. Let's see the elevator. So the elevator is here. I press the F key. It moves me up. And it plays the sound effect. And if I go down. Yeah, working fine. And regards to the anti portal, if I change the rendering mode to wireframe, ghost, you can see that in front of the anti portal, nothing is being rendered above. Although this isn't a suitable place for the anti portal. The same applies with um like like when I'm above and I look down it won't be rendered there, just for performance reasons. Uh, so. Yep, that's it. See you in the next video.